Hey guys, it is good to be back with you again. I hope your week is going well. Um, we had a big surprise last week on Friday. Uh, we found out that Judah was going to be coming, our, our latest son, in addition to the Kruger family, was going to be coming uh, a week earlier than we had anticipated. And so he was born last Friday evening. And so we're really thankful um, that everything went smoothly with that. We were able to come home on Sunday afternoon um, and are just adjusting to being a family of six and going definitely very well. And he is just a cutie pants. So we're so, so thankful for him, for God's provision, for thank you for all of you praying. Um, I was able to be there when he was born and throughout the weekend. And the kids were really excited to get to meet him on Sunday when we brought him home. So thanks for your prayers on that. And as you can see, I'm actually recording this from our house. Hence all the presidents behind me. I'm down in our kids' school room uh, doing the recording there. So looking forward to sharing and getting to spend some time thinking about God's word together tonight. Um, let me see if I can pull my PowerPoint up here. And we're going to continue on in our study of uh, habits of grace. Um, and we've talked about a lot of different aspects of uh, God's word and about studying God's word. And tonight we're going to take a look into memorizing God's word and what all of that really has to do. But before we jump into the lesson, I want to give a shout out to all of our leaders who did a just a phenomenal job for our lip sync and share the results with you of how that went. So our lip sync battle, as you guys know, we had five different youth leader couples that were all a part of that. And uh, all in all, we had almost 400 views on all the different videos. So um, I think one of the things that was cool to me is just all the creativity of each of the different leaders and lots of laughs. I, I know for our our family, our, especially our kids, just wanted to watch the videos over and over and over again. And we were all just taking some much needed laughter uh, watching those. So we hope you guys enjoyed those. I know we had a lot of fun making them. And I'm thankful to all of you leaders for the time that you guys put in as well. We got 35 votes in from all of you and even some of the adults who were a part of the, the youth group as well. Um, and so wanted to share those results with you. Though I think when you see the results, uh, no one will be too surprised by how things turned out. So we'll start with overall. The best overall, uh, the vote was 57% voted for the Simons. And I mean, hey, I got to give it to you, Pete, Noel, and family. You guys did a phenomenal job on your yakety yak. Second place came with the Bernards with their uh, their Disney mashup, followed by us, the Krugers, uh, you know, uh, taking third place on that one as well. Then the most creative, again, not surprisingly, 54% of you voted the Simons on that one, followed very closely, might I add, by the Wilsons. Uh, well done, Angie. Uh, you know, got to give her uh, and and Nate. I mean, Nate was there too, right? Um, mad props for being able to film that with three kids. That was really, really impressive. So I hope you guys got a, a good laugh out of her creativity there as well. And then it looks like the Bernards were in third place on that one. The funniest, of course, again, no surprise, got to give it up to the Simons on the yakety yak. Don't talk back. Just if you haven't seen the video, you need to go check it out. It's hilarious. Um, followed by the Krugers. And then in third place were the, the Bernards with 17%. Um, best lip sync. Now, this one was a tight one, but Brian and Carol Knapp squeaked it out with their super tone strike back. And I got to say, well done, guys. They picked up 40% of the vote, followed by the Krugers with 34%, and then the Bernards with 14% of the vote. So well done, everybody, on getting that lip sync uh, all timed out. And then the best acting, again, got to give it up to the Simons. 42% of you said they did a, a phenomenal job. And they were followed by the Naps in second, and then uh, the Bernards in third as well on that one. Well, that is the, the results of our lip sync battle challenge. And we're looking to do more fun events like that throughout the, uh, the month of April. So keep your eye out on Telegram and on Facebook and on email. And we will be giving you more information about those events as they all come together. Um, but that kind of, uh, just wanted to share that with you. I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. And I know all of us are looking forward to when we can be together again in person. So let's take and transition our thinking now, um, as we go to habits of grace and dig into this idea of memorization, um, and what that really is about. Before we jump there, I want to just do a quick review in case this is your first time grabbing one of these videos, or maybe you've watched all of them. It's always just good for us to review. And I want to think about, um, what we've been talking about here. So again, the habits of grace, this is based on the foundation of God's grace. This is not anything we can earn or anything we can do. Um, it is uh, totally built upon his, 
his uh, unmerited favor that he's given to us. And remember, we talked about the fact that um, just like a faucet, it doesn't have any power in itself. A faucet doesn't create water. It simply turns on and lets the water flow out. And in the same way, these things we're talking about here as we, as we think through spending time reading God's word, spending time praying and spending time with his people, those are all different ways that we can receive God's grace in our life. Um, those things in and of themselves don't do anything. They're simply a conduit through which God's grace flows. Last, uh, last couple of weeks, we've been talking about meditation, and that's just this idea of pressing God's word into our hearts. You know, sometimes we're good at knowing something up here. Meditation brings it down lower uh, to the heart level, to changing and affecting the way that we think. Last week, we talked about applying God's word. What does it mean to really live it out? And, you know, the thing I really want to hit home with this is when we go to God's word, we shouldn't be coming to it looking for a, a list of things to do or to not do. It's not about a, a bunch of rules, but really it should be understanding who God is, that we should come to the word with a passion and say, God, teach me more of who you are. Um, help me to love the things that you love and to just be enamored with who you are. And when we come that way, it helps not develop in us a legalistic set of rules about what we can and can't do, but instead our application of God's word becomes about developing the kind of heart attitude that God wants us to have. And so regardless of what situation we come into, we'll see that we have developed character that comes from God's word. So lastly, the thing I really want to encourage you guys, and especially during this time of quarantine, which I, I pray will be coming to an end quickly here in the next uh, the next few weeks, um, how are we using our time to do this? And at the end of the day, it comes down to being intentional to set aside time every day to be with God in his word, to, 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 to remove distractions, whether that means removing your phone, removing yourself from your family or your friends, um, find a quiet place where you can get away and just be with God because everything we're talking about here, apart from that, is going to be very difficult to apply. So it's a little bit of review of what we've covered. Um, I want to just remind you again that you can see all the teaching videos that we've done on the website now. Um, just go to nbccolumbus.org slash student hyphen resources, or you can just grab the resources tab and you'll see it right there. Um, and you can watch those videos. And I just encourage you to keep these ideas fresh in your mind as well. So jumping into this idea of memorizing God's word, I want to start with a few questions. Again, if we were together, this would be great dialogue, but we're not. So uh, I hope this will get you thinking as well. So the first thing is why memorize? Why should we memorize God's word? Is this something we do for the future or is it something for the present, right? Do you go to scripture and you say, boy, I think these verses might be helpful someday, so I'll memorize them. Or do you go to scripture and say, man, this is what I need right now. The reality is, yes, right? We go to scripture so that we can, we can memorize God's word so that when difficulties come, when temptation comes, uh, whatever situations are, that his word is something we can quickly pull to mind. But it's not just for future application. It's something that we can use right now in the present, okay? The other thing I want to think about is memorization and pairing that together with meditation. The reality is that both memorization and meditation require, require us to slow down and to consider scripture and to think it over. You know, a few weeks ago, we talked about the difference between reading the word and studying the word. And we read for breath, right? We want to, we want to cover a good amount of scripture when we read so that we can become familiar with it. We can think about the big story of the Bible. Uh, and then as we study, we kind of hone in on a specific uh, passage, ask some questions of it, try to understand it better. And meditation and memorization really take that idea further. And memorization should really just be the process of meditating on God's word throughout the day, throughout the week, and just in a constant sort of way. And so we need to recognize that meditation and memorization should be closely associated. Um, we talked a little bit about this idea that it's more important. It's not as important to know God's word. Yeah, let's see if I can not butcher this. Um, knowing, we shouldn't, we shouldn't aim to know God's word word perfectly, but rather we should aim to take to heart God's word, okay? Um, and so it's not as important about having every single word in a verse or a passage memorized exactly spot on. It's more important that we're applying that, um, that passage and that truth to our lives. And really, why do we do this? Well, it comes back to this idea of setting our minds on the things above where Christ is. That's really what memorization comes down to. It's trying to think God's thoughts after him. It's not that we're coming up with new ideas, but when we think God's thoughts after him, we're learning what the mind of Christ is that is revealed to us in God's word. You remember we talked about that a few weeks ago in 1 Corinthians 2, and then we're now thinking about the things that God has already thought about uh, and really trying to seek to follow after after the way he has already thought. Well, good. Um, a few other things to think about. So 
does memorizing scripture seem hard to you? Probably some of you who have been in a water are like, no, I can memorize like three or four verses like that. No big deal, right? And others of you are like, oh, yes, it feels like I can go over it and over it and over it again and again. Um, and I just can't, I can't get it down. Think about other things you guys have memorized. Maybe for some of you, you have a phone, you've memorized your phone number. Maybe you've memorized your address, people, significant people in your family or friends, birthdays, right? Um, and those things really help remind us what is important to us and also there are things we tend to refer to often. Maybe some of you have memorized your social security number, maybe some of you don't even have a clue what it is. I would imagine that many of you who are working, uh, if you have a job, you probably know your social security number. Why is that? It's because you're required to use it. Maybe that's a login somewhere or uh, the last four of your social you need for this or that, right? And so when we think about memorizing scripture, the reality is if it's something that we're using constantly in our everyday life, memorizing it won't be as difficult. And so maybe the question is, if it seems difficult for us to memorize God's word, do we recognize its relevance in everyday life? Is it something, again, going back to this idea of meditation that we're dwelling on, as Joshua 1 talked about, day and night that we're dwelling on God's word? We really want to think about that as well. The other thing I want to ask is, what or who motivates you to memorize? So when you're memorizing scripture, why are you doing it? Is it because you've got to do it for school, for a Bible class? Are you doing it for Awana because you've got sections you want to do for those of our junior hires? Are you doing it maybe because you're on mission team? Yes, four of you just started shaking your heads up and down. Yes, because Pastor Ben asks us to memorize a passage every year. Um, or are you memorizing it because you want to really savor God's word? Just something I want you to really to kind of think about. Um, are you doing it because you value it or because somebody else is telling you to do it? And lastly, one of the things I want you to see about memorizing God's word is this is really a mark of owning your faith. When you come to a place where it is not somebody else telling you, hey, this is a good thing, you need to do it, but instead you recognizing, wow, this is vital. This is something I need to do, regardless of whether your parents are telling you to memorize scripture, regardless of whether I'm telling you to memorize scripture, or a WANA leader or, or a school teacher, uh, do you see the value for yourself of memorizing God's word. You know, we're going to talk about this a lot during the time that we have together in youth group is our desire is for you to see, to see you own your faith, to make it your own. Um, and memorization is a mark of that. If this is something you really own, then it's going to be something you want to memorize and internalize. And so I just encourage you to think about that. This is a mark really of authentic faith. So tonight we're going to take a look briefly at Psalm 119. Now, if any of you know, yes, that is the longest chapter in the Bible. No, we are not going to look at all of it. But before we do that, oh, baby bomb, there's a picture of Judah. Because, hey, you know, I know who doesn't like to see cute pictures of, of babies. This is him on Sunday when we came home from the the, uh, the hospital in the cutie. I know we are super blessed and so thankful. So hopefully you're going to get to see more of that cute face around. But just wanted to break up the teaching a little bit there with that. So now on to Psalm 119, 9 through 6. I'm going to read the passage and then we'll have a couple of observations along the way. If you have your Bible, feel free to turn there. You can see it here on the screen as well. It says this, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Verse 13, with my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statues. I will not forget your word. So let's think about this. Applying this passage, whoa, what does this have to do with memorization? Well, the first thing I want to say is that in verse 9 shows us that God's word guards our heart. Um, what we'll see is that by directing us in the way of wisdom instead of the way of folly, it helps teach us right from wrong. And so when you come into situations and you want to know how to do, again, remember going back to the character, right? Not the list of do's and don'ts. If we have God's word in our heart, we'll know because we'll already know the things that God values and those will be the things that we'll value. And so I want you to see in verse nine um, that experience may teach an old person, but a young person and even an old person especially need to draw our instruction from scripture. That's uh, the first point, first observation I want to make here. Secondly, I want you to see that knowing God's word will help us to seek God. So the reality is, well, why would we want to seek God? We know across scripture that no one seeks God on their own. All of us are sinful and have gone astray. And so there's a sense that God has to awaken in us a desire 
uh, to know his word and to want to know him more. And we can see in verse 10 here that memorization or this idea of internalizing God's word helps us to know him more. And so I just want to challenge you to realize um, that we can keep our way, our, our excuse me, with our whole heart, we can seek God. And that really comes from knowing his word and not wandering away from his commandments. The next thing I want to look at here is verse 11. It says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So any of us who are followers of Jesus recognize this has got to be the heartbeat, right? We don't want to sin against God. Our desire is to live a holy and righteous life. We know this is a lot easier to say than it is to do. And so knowing God's word helps influence the way we think, the things we value, again, the kind of person that we are, and that helps us not to sin against God, whether that's the sins of how we think, the things that we say, or the things that we do. Oftentimes, the two that are the easiest for us to control are the things that we do and the things that we, the things that we say. But really deep down under all that is what we think. And in verse 11, we're reminded that storing up God's word in our heart, the really deep seat of who we are, by having God's word be such a, a foundation there, is what will help us to not sin against God. Verse 12, we see the idea here that we desperately need God to teach us his ways. Um, the verse says, blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. As you come to scripture and as you come to memorize, is that the heart, right? Is it not, Lord, help me to get these sections done uh, so that I can I can have the best prize or help me to get this done so that I can get a good grade or help me to get this done so that my parents will be happy or Pastor Ben will be happy with me. But instead we need to come and say, Lord, teach me your statues or teach me your ways. That really should be our heart's cry as we come to memorize. And so as you think about memorization for yourself personally, I just want to challenge you to let that be one of the driving motivations is to have God teach us his ways. Jump down with me, verse 14. And it says, in the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. Now, the reality is, if any of us said, would you choose wealth or would you choose God's word? You're all going to give a good Christian answer. Oh, no, Pastor Ben, I'm spiritual. I would choose God's word, right? I would say the same thing. But when the push comes to shove, when we're talking about riches, it really isn't so much this idea of having money for the sake of having money, right? But it's having money for the sake of what it gives us, whether that's security, uh, whether that is happiness, comfort, safety, fill in the blank, um, pleasure, enjoyment, right? And so the question is, do we love God's word more than we love all those things? Um, and here in verse 14, we're reminded that our prayer needs to be, God, help me to delight in your word as much as I love all the other pleasures and things of this world. Lastly, um, I want you to see in verses 15 to 16 here, the what, how, and why of memorization. And the first thing you'll see is that um, it says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statues and I will not forget your word. So how should we approach God's word? Well, first of all, we need to meditate on it. That's the, the what, right? So as we come to God's word, uh, we need to meditate on it. We need to fix our eyes on it. There's a sort of sense of not swerving and being distracted by other things, right? So we need to dwell on it. We need to need the truth of God's word into our heart. That's the what. The how is without being distracted. We need to have a, a laser-like focus. And then the last part we see in verse 16 is why. Why do we want to do this? Well, it says, I will delight in your statues. I will not forget your word. Do we delight in God's word? Or pushing back to the previous point, do we like riches more than we like God's word? Do we like comfort? Do we like pleasure? Do we like safety, security, predictability, um, being a, accepted by people? I mean, fill in the blanks, right? Um, or do we love God? Do we love his word in that sense? So I just want to encourage you with those things to think through that, the things for Psalm 119 as we as we consider this passage. So I'm going to try to jump now to just a few practical things to think about when we're talking about memorization. Um Apparently, I repeated the slide. There we go. So some practical thoughts. The first one is diversify, okay? So when it comes down to memorizing God's word, don't get stuck in a rut. Maybe sometimes you're going through your scripture reading plan and you read a passage and you're like, wow, there's this one verse that just jumps out at you. And you think, this is one I want to just meditate on more. So take that and memorize that. Maybe you're going through a, a passage and you're reading something like Philippians 2 and you're like, whoa, this is solid. I would just love to memorize this whole passage. I would encourage you to do that. So whether you're taking and memorizing an entire verse, an entire chapter, or maybe even an entire book, um, mix it up. 
don't get stuck where you're only in the New Testament, you're only in the Old Testament, but wherever you're at, know any passages that stand out to you and consider coming back and memorizing them. Again, remember, all of this starts with reading God's word. If you're not reading it, it's going to be very difficult uh, to be meditating on it and even more difficult to be memorizing it. Next thing I would say is take it with you all day, right? Sometimes we think like I have to block out an hour to do memorization, but the reality is take it and put it on your phone. Make it the background of your your, uh, your phone, the scripture passage you're trying to memorize. Make a bookmark, which is what we're doing with the mission team. Put a sticky note up or something on your wall by your mirror or the place that you're going to go in your bathroom where you brush your teeth every day. Um, whatever it is, take it with you every day. So no matter where you're at, whether you're at school, you're at home, um, you're on your device, you are seeing God's word in front of you and just making it a constant part of it. The other thing I would say is in memorizing, seek to understand it, to feel it, and to apply it. Maybe ask the question, this might be different for many of you, what is the emotional response I should have as a result of this, right? It's not just about facts and data as we go to God's word, but how should I feel about sin? How should I feel about God's holiness? Um, how should I feel about God's love that he has for his children, right? And then think about what is this passage calling me to do? It's not enough to just ascend to the knowledge and say, well, that's good for somebody else. And I hope that they apply it. But instead we need to ask, how does this practically apply to me? Something else you can do is you're memorizing a passage is turn it into a prayer. Uh, make it something that you are praying for other people around you, or maybe even something you're praying for yourself. Um, this is really true this past week when everything came up with Judah and all of a sudden our weekend plans and all the projects we had still wanted to get done before Judah was going to come were all thrown out the window. Went, okay, uh, change of plans, right? And I found myself sitting in a waiting room uh, praying Psalm 118, which is the passage that we've been working on with the mission team. And remember that in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. And God just kept bringing that to mind over and over again to know that I can call to the Lord when I'm distressed and to know that he will answer. And he was so faithful and did that. So uh, as you're memorizing God's word, turn that into a prayer, whether it's for yourself or for somebody else. And then the third thing is think about it, or I guess fifth thing, uh, think about it in light of the gospel, okay? What does this passage tell us about Jesus, about man, about Jesus' payment for our sin, who we are, and where we are now? What can we really think about in the, the greater context of things? So um, this is a little bit of some practical thoughts. I want to give you the discussion questions that we're going to be talking about Wednesday night in our small group. So um, the first one is, what do you think it means to think God's thoughts after him? How do we think God's thoughts after him? How do we apply that? So I want you to be thinking through that. And then the second question I want to ask you guys to be thinking about is what are some ideas and ways that you would like to start memorizing scripture as a result of this study? So maybe you found something really creative that you do. Share that with your group. You know, you take and you do such and such thing, and that helps you really bring to mind a scripture passage. Or maybe you don't do something like that, but you'd like to, and you thought, oh man, I thought this would be cool. When you're talking about taking it with you every day, uh, throughout the day, I thought of, man, I could do this thing or I could do that thing. Share those things. Share some creative ways that you have memorized scripture. Maybe you, you make a song, you know, whatever it would be. Be creative and share those with the groups so that we can be encouraged together as well. So just a reminder, our Zoom discussion groups will be Wednesday night from 8.30 to 9. The guys will have one group. The girls will have another. Watch for those links. I'll be sending them out on Telegram um, as well as on Facebook. And then there um, will be out there as well. We hope you can join us. It was really encouraged. We had, I think, over 30 people there last week between the guys and the girls. I would love to see even more than that. So come hang out, say hi, and we'll talk through those things together and be encouraged. And I want to leave you on a fun note. Just thought I would share with you our family uh, and their their uh, excitement getting to meet Judah this week. There's Zeke holding Judah. You can tell just uh, just loving that moment. Titus just soaking it up there. Very excited boys to have a big brother. And of course, Naomi was very excited to be a first time big sister. So again, thank you guys so much for all your prayers for our family. It has been cool to see everything that God's doing. And uh, we are excited to see what he has in store in the future. So again, keep in touch, guys. Shoot me messages, text, be connecting with each other, let each other know how you can be praying for each other. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again next time. Take care, guys.